letters and pictures safely ranged in an old box. Hidden treasures full of secrets, fading photos, intimate confessions, flashes of the past, witnessing sparkles of love, time of joy, hope, illusions, and disillusions, wounds which may never heal. A journey through time, refreshing memories of sweet embrace devotion and lost and unrequited affection. Souvenirs of love. Precious moments of my life. What makes this project so different than your other projects? Well, my first three albums uh, were a blend of different kind of styles. Bossa Nova, Cuban music, jazz influences, with different singers from all over the world, from Brazil, Cuba, Spain. And now I'm going to the road where everything is in English, only American musicians recording here in New York. And I think that's a very special moment because it's uh, my first real jazz record, if you will. And it's like straight ahead jazz, uh, no other influences like, like Latin music. It's a jazz novel. This is the first time you've collaborated with Miko, and tell me about your experience working with him as a musician, as well as working with the producer, Miko. He's quite exciting, um, a perfectionist. And uh, the beauty is to be able to actually write things that, that speaks of your heart and your experiences and really articulate that because sometimes people write and they create music but all the time you know you don't always get the essence of really what they're trying to do but with his music is just it's very inspirational it speaks to the heart and to our to my heart and probably a lot of other people have had these experience but the the way he puts the instrumentation together is just so uh, brilliant he has an idea of of each tune to give it, 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 it is, is the special kind of a treatment. He knows just what instrumentation to put in there to make it just open up and, and bloom. It's, it's like a beautiful rose that has just, I've seen just, you know, blossom. Very, very exciting, very beautiful. What is it that you saw in his songs that added to the flavor of Miko's songwriting? Each of his songs are very individual. You can't pick any song that is would be like the next one. Um, everything is, you know, is very, very, very personal, and and experiences of his life, obviously, that is personal each phase. So in the music, you get that uh, feeling that each of them are, are, are very special in a, in in a different each in a different way. You know, this is the first time you've collaborated with. NEA jazz master Hubert Laws. What was that experience like? Oh, well, I've always loved Hubert. I just, uh, it was just beautiful to be able to, to connect with him finally, and such a fine gentleman as well as a great uh, artist, you know? This is the first time you collaborated with Buster Williams also. Yes, and I've loved Buster for years. I mean, I've seen him with all the famous, the, the, the one of my favorite singers, and, and oh, you know, it's just been, I've always looked forward to the opportunity to work with him. So this was quite special for me also, absolutely. Miko is relatively an unknown here in America because he's recorded and has released his music overseas. And he's a producer, writer, he's kind of behind the scenes, but he's put all this together. Do you think that Miko is going to bring another generation the, the younger generation into what he's doing to jazz music right now? Hopefully, because it, it um, is, it's very rich in spirit and in, you know, the soul of the music. Um, hopefully that it, 
you know, that it will trans into something very huge. Um, uh, jazz is taking many turns, but I don't think this is too far left from, from you know, the essence of the music. Um, it's just compelling, great music. And I, I think would be appealing to the youngsters. Yeah, I do. I think it could make a, a great, a significant difference. Uh, what did you think about Miss Stalin's performance as far as what she brought to the project? Well, I think she was a great choice for the recording. I, I'm, I'm familiar with her work and Eric and, of course, Hubert. Actually, I'm familiar with everybody on the record. They're all heroes of mine. And and I think one characteristic of each player is they they happen to be very passionate when they play. You know, it's not just a lot of notes, but it has feeling and meaning behind it. Immediately when you learn his music, the first thing you do is you feel all the passion that's in it. Everything he does has a um, passionate take to it, and, and I really enjoy playing it. The challenge is to try to bring the beauty in your solos and and blend into what's happening compositionally. And you also collaborated also with Brother Stefan Harris, who's another another, right. another part of the next generation of jazz. Well, not the next generation, he's right here right now. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about Stefan and what he brings to the project. Well, it was my first time playing with him. Um, I th we may have done a, a concert, thought he was professional on the highest level, and, and I, I have unbelievably high expectations from hearing him on other recordings and live before. And he's a great player. It's a pleasure to have him. No. What's it like working with your friends and some of the architects of this music, but also working with the younger spirit in the idiom of jazz? Well... <laughs> This music is is uh, is spontaneous, and no matter what the age happens to be, they speak a similar language. We all speak a similar language, and to hear the individual expressions as they have been is just so marvelous. I mean, my spirit was so uplifted as not only as you know participant, but as a listener. As you know, we did different kinds of uh, ensembles here today: some duos, some trios and full rhythm section. And in each occasion, there was a different spirit that was projected. And I tell you, I was so, I was taken, I was taken aback by listening to the individual as well as the collaborative uh, efforts from everyone here. And it's really stimulating for me, inspiring. And this is the first time you also collaborated with uh, Eric Reed also. No, it's not the first time. It's not, this is not no, your first actually, time. Uh, my first collaboration with him was way, it had to be at least 12 years ago. And in Central Park when we were doing a tribute to Quincy Jones. That was my very first exposure to him. But then we played recently in Los Angeles at a place called El Rey. And we played in an ensemble with John Clayton, um, Kenny Burrell, uh, uh, Clayton Cameron on drums. And uh, yeah, that, that, was, that was the ensemble there. And uh, no, I had the pleasure and honor of playing with Eric. He's a, such a phenomenal player, as well as Vince, who I just listened to, and oh my goodness, uh, Buster Williams on the bass, and Victor Lewis on drums. All of this is just very, it's always inspiring, first of all, to hear an entire ensemble recording. Nowadays, I do so many overdubs, and, and, but to be here with the, the spirit all congealed together is really special. You know, this is the first time, in speaking with Miss Stallings earlier, this is the first time she said that she collaborated with Hubert Laws. And Mr. Laws also even said that it was also a, 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 a monumental experience for him because he never worked with her also. Right, right. And, and that's the interesting thing about my project. I'm, I'm, I'm getting different people together who either already worked together, but maybe like 40 years ago, like Victor and, and Yuba, you know, they usually don't play together. So he came from LA and joined Victor here in New York and the same thing with Mary. Victor, you know, again, they say lightning doesn't always strike twice. 
<laughs> but you're back here for another session with Nico. The important thing about making a record, man, is that you have to have good material. You, you know, especially when when you've got an aggregation like this. You, you know, I mean, I mean, these are like these are the big boys. You, you know, I'm glad to be rubbing shoulders with them. You, you know, uh, um, and so when you have good material along with a good cast. It really, you know, something special happens, and 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 Miko, his his writing style, it has it has a thing to it. You, you know, it it's 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 very sensuous. It it, it it's it, it's very sensitive. It, it's very you, you know romantic. You you know, it's like the love scene out of a movie. You, you know, and, uh, it, it, it's haunting. And 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 it, it it stays with you, and and puts, just puts a, a vibe, out there, that's that's cozy and and warm and feels good and, and you feel you feel comfortable with it. He he's really got something as as a composer. I'm glad to be here. You know you know, one of the things that you know really sticks out about this this project and other projects that you've you've worked with Miko is just the fact that you have Buster Williams as well as Hubert Laws and the legendary Mary Stallings. And how easy or how hard is it to mesh with all of these musicians? Because you guys are great luminaries of the music and the idiom. I would say um the hardest part is hoping that you could do them justice about being in the same room uh, performing with these people and and um, when you get there you realize that these people they they make it easy for you you know it, everybody does their job the, the team ball comes together and 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 creates magic and um and so I'm really glad to be here playing with people on this level with good material and 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 magic happens I mean, I have people like Stefan and Buster who regularly, on a regular basis, play together, you know. And this creates just an awesome team, you know. And, and it actually takes a lot of time, you know. It's much harder than putting a football team together, you know. Like you do your research, you know, who can play with that person and who brings that element, what I'm looking for, that color, that language to this particular song, you know. <laughs> About his writing and his music is the space. He really allows the proper amount of space for the for the melody to shine. So as a musician, when you play his music, you feel like you don't have to force anything. You really can take your time and just contribute just what's necessary for the overall flow of the melody. And not every everyone is able to do that as a composer. Sometimes people put too much harmony or too little. His music is really, really beautiful. And it's just a great lesson to be around incredible musicians like this. What did you bring to the vibe this evening? <laughs> I, as always, I hope I bring love. He has his own way to, to write music, and, and uh, I think that's the quality that we always look for from a musician or from a composer. You know, he has his own sound, and uh, having all these great musicians just help the music even in a, in a better way. So uh, it's always... Um, a real pleasure to, to to work with him and to play his music. Speaking of working with great musicians, you're with great like Victor Lewis and you're in here with Eric Reed and Hubert Laws and Buster Williams. What's it like collaborating with these great icons of the music? Well for me it's a, it's a learning process, you know, you learn you learn every time you play with them because uh you know they are Real uh, living legends, you know, and uh, any single opportunity is uh, is great to take because for me at least I'm I'm learning every time. You, know. you also bring the 
your guitar style as well as your unique vocal style to Miko's project. How easy is it to mesh with his production and his composition? <laughs> it's not easy because, um, you know, I'm, I'm using harmonizer uh, in, into, into his music. I have to find a way to do it the most natural way. So it's not easy, but at the same time it's very easy because, you know, I'm being myself, <laughs> you know. I'm not forcing anything. I'm not forcing to, uh, uh, to bring something into the music that the music doesn't need. And, you know, it has to be in the most organic, organic way. Is, is so warm and just friendly and I think his music emanates from his being and it, it's, it's, it's just so natural and it's a, really a pleasure to play his music. It's, it's all so lyrical and beautiful and from the heart. That's what I love yeah, about it and it, it keeps flowing, you know, it, it, the evolution, you know, it never ends seemingly from him because he's got a lot to say. It's so simple and to the point. The audience doesn't have to wonder uh, what, wonder what he's trying to say. Uh, it's, it's just self-evident. He doesn't make it complicated. He just puts it right there, easy to understand, and it has audience appeal. And it's lyrical, it's beautiful melodies. Well, Ma Mary is certainly an unsung hero. Uh, she's well known by s certain people in the music business. Uh, many people don't know uh, how great she is because she chooses not to travel that much for whatever personal reason, I don't know. Uh, she just stays in San Francisco, has a family there. I've always wanted to be on a gig okay, yeah, or yeah, some record be, with her, but I. Our paths never cross, you know. And when I, I came in the studio, we were, we were both saying this is the first time we've ever recorded together. Actually, there was one gig years ago in San Francisco in, in the Napa Valley, you know, where they make the wine. There was a drummer named Eddie Moore. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He used to play with Sonny Rollins. Well, he was also our high school classmate in San Francisco. And it was his gig at Mary Stallings and I were on it. This had to be like in the mid 70s. And, but uh, it was just a small little gig at, at somebody's house, a wine tasting place. But this is the first really professional gig that we've ever done. You know, I've admired her for years. I mean, she was much more advanced than I was in high school. She was singing, going to clubs before I even ever started going to jazz clubs in San Francisco. This is when I, we were still in high school, you know. I used to think, ooh, she's going to a jazz club. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And in terms of Miko, uh, he's, uh, you know, certainly a, a, a unique, personal, strong voice in music, uh, uh, I hope the best for both of them, that, that they will get wider recognition as time goes by. Buster, this is your third time working, well, fourth time working with Miko. Uh, I don't even count. Okay. I mean, right. Miko is a wonderful composer, and I never tire of playing his music because it's always so insightful. And, you know, it, it, it lends itself to the human emotion, you know? If there's whatever you're going through at the time, when you play his music, either it relates to what's happening now or it's related to something that's happened in your life at some point. So, I always learn more about myself when I play his music.